When me and my best friend were younger, we would ask our babysitter to take us to the school playground at night so we could play hide and seek. We lived in a small town where everyone knew everyone and we were friendly with one another. So this wasn't abnormal or dangerous, at least not at the time. One night we went over past our bedtimes, but our parents were cool and let us stay up to play hide and seek. At one point, I was trying to find my friend and my babysitter. As I looked for them, a car slowly drove by the playground. Their lights were off and the windows were tented. I watched them as they drove by and felt as though they were watching me. When they were out of sight, I instantly forgot about it and went back to seeking. It came to be around midnight and our babysitter thought that it was about time to go. Of course, we begged to stay a little longer but he said it was late. We started to walk up the hill that was behind the school. We then all heard a car behind us and we look over to see the same car driving on the grass towards us. My babysitter instantly grabbed both of us and threw us over his shoulders and started running towards the bushes that cut us off from the other street. The car started to speed up and so did my babysitter. When we got to the bushes, my babysitter forced us through and up a metal fence behind them. I ended up getting cuts everywhere, but worst of all I cut my leg on the fence and was bleeding badly. I could hear the driver of the car calling out to us, asking in a kind voice, Where are you? Then in a serious and scary voice, I know you're in there, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> we ended up getting to a house that had lights on, and our babysitter banged on the door begging to let us inside and that he had kids and one of them was bleeding. A woman who we knew as Emily opened the door and pretty much dragged us inside and shut the door behind her. Later that night the police were called and I was sent to the hospital to get stitches and a shot for the rusty metal I had cut my leg on. It doesn't end there though. Later that week my dad was watching the news as usual and a story came up. It showed the playground that we were at a couple of nights ago and showed two medics rolling a body covered with a white sheet into an ambulance. The girl had been dead for a couple of days and her body hadn't even been there for very long. The killer was never found, so he could still be out there. Sometimes I wonder if the man in the car did get us, would we have been in the same situation that girl ended up in and she would have been watching the news to see our bodies being rolled into an ambulance. It makes me feel guilty, but I will never, and have never, stepped another foot in that playground since. This incident happened when I was a sophomore in high school. My parents got a job in the countryside, so I was left alone in the city. I had to live on my own, so they ended up renting a small flat corridor apartment for me. For the first few days, I felt free to be myself, but also a little scared since it was my first time living alone. I felt a chill in the house somewhere, and I sometimes opened my eyes at daybreak after I moved in. For your information, I rarely woke up at dawn when I lived with my parents before. Another day, when I looked at the clock attached to the room, it was often pointed at 2 a.m. Sometimes I woke up at 1.50 or 2.10. Anyway, it was always close to 2 a.m. At first, I thought it was just nothing and fell asleep again. But it kept happening again for about a week. On that day, I opened my eyes around 2 a.m. as usual. Oh, shoot. It happened again. Thinking like this, I tried to fall asleep again, but I couldn't fall asleep at all, rolling my eyes vacantly. At that moment, I heard the sudden sound of shoes in the hallway. Because the next side of my room was the hallway and my bed was attached to the hallway, so the sound was very clear. From the elevator, he was coming toward my house. But at the moment... The footsteps gave me a sense of chilling for some reason. 
and I began to feel anxious that the destination would be my house. And eventually, the sound of shoes just exactly stopped right in front of my house. Shortly after the sounds of its footstep, I suddenly heard the slide of the front door lock goes up. My door lock has numbers, and when you open the slide, you press the number and close the slide. Then the door opens. So someone was literally trying to open my door. It slowly began to press the numbers one by one. I was so scared that I put on my blanket and shouted inside, Please don't open it! Please, it's not seven numbers! My apartment password was seven digits, so I started to get terrified. I couldn't move because my body was frozen in that state, and if I moved just a little, someone outside would be excited. It slowly pressed the seven-digit number and slid down the slide. At that moment, my heart sank and I felt like I was about to die. Fortunately, I heard a sharp warning. It meant the number was wrong. Thank God. But as soon as I heard the warning, it opened the slide again and pressed the number faster than before. When it got it wrong again, it pressed the number frantically. It was incomparably faster than when I pressed my password as fast as I could to go to the bathroom in a hurry after I came back from school. As the number kept getting wrong a few times, the door lock machine automatically recognized that it was an error and stopped. The outside was calmed down for a long time. So I took a breath and got out of my bed quietly. As soon as I was about to get out of bed to drink a cup of water in the kitchen, something suddenly crossed my mind. Why can't I hear the shoe sound? Is he still out at the door? And at that moment, Again, it began to press the number roughly again. Come to think of it, it might have known the fact that it would work again shortly after the machine stopped, so it just waited in front of the machine. At the moment, I got goosebumps. So I ran to the front door, put a chai, and jumped back into bed. The moment I just put on my blanket, the outside suddenly calmed down again. It didn't press the number even though the machine didn't stop. Is the door opened? Shaking in anxiety, I lifted the blanket slightly, but there was no one. And as soon as I was relieved, I heard a little sound from the back of my head. To be exact, it was from under the bed. You didn't think I'd make it, did you? Did you? Did you? The moment a woman's whispering voice came into my ears, I realized it was sleep paralysis. In that state, I think I fainted without moving my body once. The next morning, I opened my eyes and went straight to the front door. Fortunately, the door was locked, and the chain above it was fine also. I opened the door and looked out, just in case but there was no one there. This time I looked at the password slide and it seemed fine on the outside. However, the moment I opened the slide, I felt like I almost fainted. The numbers corresponding to my apartment's password among the number plates were all scuffed as if they were scratched by a knife or something. I immediately told my parents about this and it seemed they were worried about me, so they came right away to see me. They were also surprised to see the scratch number plates and ended up heading to the security office to see if there were any CCTV records taken at that time. However, no matter how hard we looked at it, we could not see anyone wearing shoes or unusual. There were five people in the CCTV, but all of them were residents of the apartment. Eventually, the door lock was replaced with a new one, and my parents stayed at home for a few days and went back again. After that, I gradually didn't wake up at dawn. I haven't believed in any unusual phenomenon in my life, but I could say it was definitely strange after experiencing them for the first time. Even now that I think about it, 
I think I'm getting goosebumps. 